Today, uh, he will talk about uh, the story of Molana Jalaluddin Rumi and his master, Shams Tabriz, how uh, they came together, and after that, um, if you have any question, you can ask uh, questions. ما سلام جای بابا میخوام داستانی از مولانا رومی و شمس تابلید برای شنواندگان عزیز شمس تبریز یک روز گذارش به روم مبتد روم پای تحت ایران قدیم بود و اونجا مولان های رومی یکی مشتری بود مثل خومینی همتون متنفرد بود هفتصد نفر شاگر داشت تبریز داشت که درس میداد مولانا شمس تبریز رفت همتون رو مسید صدر مجلس اونجا که مولانا بود گفت کتابه هایی که مولانا سال و سال از چیدش نوشته بود خاطراتش نوشته بود همه شمس تبریز پرسید که اینا چیه؟ گفت که اینها هیلوها رو به تو چه؟ وقتی که این حرف سر مولانا شمس تبریز پاش کرده این کتاب رو همه ریختون دیر آب رفت نمیگی برشه؟ نه ول مولانا جلال دین رومی هیست تو بی ریلیجیس اسلامیک ریلیجیس پریچر لایک آیت الله هی واس پلیم در رول آف خومینی ات در تایم اند هی هاد سیون هندرد students and he had a large school and then he was living in a room, Rumie, which is uh, a large town, a large city in Persia. And uh, one day, Shams Tabriz, being a Darvish, he walks, he walks in his school and he looks at all his volumes of uh, handwritten manuscripts of religious um, um, things, you know, what to do and what not to do. And Shams Tabriz asks Rumi, what is all this about? And Rumi says, well, to you, being a Darvish, this is all a story. It's not your business to know about the religious facts. And as soon as Shams hears that, throws all the books into the small ponds, and every, all the books drown deep into the pond and get wet. And of course, uh, Rumi gets, gets very upset and says, my God, what I have done. This is the work of 30 years, and here it goes. Uh, into the water. I know that the Rihtaram has been a very good thing. The Shams of Tabrid has been a very good thing. The Shams of Tabrid has been a very good thing. The Shams of Tabrid has been a very good thing. The Shams of Tabrid has been a very good thing. آب اطلاعات به این کتاب ها نرسیده گفت که این دیگه چه سری هستش گفت ایرا با اکتاب های میگن اون های که اون گفت بیلا باره تو هم در جواب گوش گفت که این با اکتاب ها رو بگن شمس گوز تو در پانس و یک از این تایم تکس آل در بوکس آت 
and show it to Rumi, and sure enough, uh, Rumi opens it up, and it wasn't even wet. And at that time, all the volumes of uh, books were written by ink, and sure enough, by falling in, into the water, it should disappear. But once uh, he gets all the books out, it was intact. It wasn't even wet. So, um, Rumi asks Shams, what is this all about? And Shams says, this is, the rea this is the reality and this is the intoxication. It's not your business.
اون یاد داشته با هم بریم هر چند طورش میشه بریم So, uh, Shams asked uh, Romy to go to such and such home and, um, you know, totally give uh, the direction which room you have to go, which bottle there is wine. So, Romy has to follow the instruction, but then Shams also mentioned, once you get, well, once you get that bottle of wine, do not hide it under your gown. You have to have it by the shoulder and carry it all throughout. So uh, Rumi goes and uh, to this uh, to to the town that uh, to the area of the town that all the Jewish people were living, and he knocks on uh, one of the door and he asks the gentleman who opened up the door that I'm here to buy a bottle of wine and poor guy was uh, you know scared a lot and he says well I don't have any bottle of wine because if they would find the government at that time if they would find that he does have it and he sell it they easily he easily could lose his head for so uh, but then very gently and very calmly uh, Rumi explains that no, I want that for medicine and I, I know exactly where it is. Can you just let me go and take it? So, so he has to open up the door and Rumi goes and uh, not on the first room, not on the second room, but on the third room. He opens up the door and then there were, um, based on the uh, description that Shams has given, there, there, there were cupboards and he opens up the middle cupboard and sure enough there were seven bottles there and six of them were, were vinegar and then the middle one was wine so he picks up the wine and he pays the money and he leaves <laughs> مولانا این شرایط بیاره من اتاق از خونش دیرون ما عواش کشید بود شد این محلی بود که فیلید بر جمعیت بود که مولانا روزی رد بشه عواش گیره به ایتی سنگ و افتاد و بشیش شراب شکست و بوی شراب هم تو کشید تو بیدون همه مردم مردم بیدون این جد بدیم این شمال نامان عرفش که شرابی دیگرمی را تو کنش می کنند و هم در منبر صحبت های مغربی با ما می کنند خورا که شای گردن شما را در گردن شما را خواهم بزنید که سر می کشن و بسید که شدن را بشتن می کشن که به برانش پیشه یکی دیگه آخوان و خوی بچهش بگیرن با پشنش که شخص تقریبی اون موضوعیت مانده بود که داشت تایر ارد به تایر ارد مثلا عبدالیات ایران در یک چیش به هم زدن مازر هست So uh, Rumi once he got a bottle of wine he uh, didn't obey Shams and he hid it under his gun and he started to walk and in the middle of the town which lots of people were doing some shopping and business there was a stone and he falls down. He falls down and sure enough, the bottle of wine breaks. And then the fragments and wine spread all around and all the people, you know, uh, come to know. And they said, what a hypocrite he is. He's telling us not, not to drink and he's getting it and he goes in his uh, home and hiding it and having it and he's a hypocrite, we have to kill him. So they take his turban and um, to turn, turn it around his head and start to pull him toward the judge to get his um, um, judgment of, um, to kill him, to, to, to kill him actually. But at the same time, Suddenly, Shams 
doing uh, Teriol Ars, which means in one second he traveled from Tabriz to Rumye, which is like hundreds of miles. And he started walking and he says, what are you doing? What's, what's this poor guy has done? What is his sin? And, you know, mentioning to all the people. And they said, well, can't you see he's so and so? And he's drinking and he's a hypocrite. As soon as Shams heard that, of course, he knew. He said, well, this is not wine. Are you crazy? This is rose water. Can't you smell? And suddenly the fragrance of rose water is spread all around. <laughs> so uh, then people started to apologize and you know, forgive us and let uh, Rumi to go and follow Shams. Uh, home this time. And uh, 
Then Shams says to Molana that I've been um, very lonely recently and why don't you ask your wife to sleep with me tonight? <laughs> so, um, of course, Rumi has to obey. He accepted Shams as his master. So he went and he talked to his wife and of course the wife was very upset and said, are you crazy, are you out of your mind? What kind of man of God you are? <laughs> you don't have any shame. But um, then uh, Rumi uh, made his wife actually pu 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 push his wife and uh, they had a, he, he, he also made a, the bed ready and uh, sure enough Shams had already gone to the bed and waiting for the wife to come and uh, you know the, the lady was screaming and fighting and just uh, Rumi opened up the door and pulled, pushed uh, the wife inside and closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, after a minute or so, the wife started, open up the door, open up the door. And uh, so Rumi says, just shut up. He says, but come, there is nobody here. So uh, Rumi opens up uh, the door and goes in, inside the room and the wife said, well, he told me that, tell to your husband, I'm going to uh, the place of the silence and uh, in the Tabriz. So if you want to come and find me, you come, you come and find me there. I will be in place of silence. And uh, suddenly he, he smoked like a smoke and disappeared in front of my eyes. So So, Rumi goes next day uh, with his son, he goes to um, Tabriz. And then for a long time, for a few months, he was asking, uh, where is the place of silence? And he was asking all the people and nobody knew. They just said, we don't know, I don't know. And then uh, he was get, getting fed up and tired. So one day he said that this is the last day. I'm going to ask where is the place of silence. And if they don't, nobody knows, then I'm going to go back to my hometown. So um, on the street he sees an old man and he says, where is the place of silence? And the old man says, you fool, the place of silence is just in front of you. It's the graveyard, can you see? <laughs> so uh, then he, uh, he goes into the graveyard. <laughs> Uh, 
یک روز صبح تشکر بودشم پایی بود که او می رفت بالا و پایی بود و پایی بود می اومد او بالا بود تا اینکه خیلی خسته شد بالا او خیلی دفعه من می این دفعه آخری هستید من می رفت اگر تعمل که به جواب من داد که داد نفعه من هم کنم و پرکی کنم بایی So he walks into the graveyard and then in the middle there is a tower that uh, they say the prayer. So up on the tower uh, he sees Shams. So he, he calls my Shams, my sh Shams and he walks, um, he walks the stairs all the way up. But as soon as he gets up there, suddenly Shams disappears and sure enough he's at the bottom of the tower. Tower. So he has to walk the stairs down again and come and get him. But then again, Shams would disappear and go on the, on the top. And that was going on from morning till evening. And he was very tired and extremely tired of doing that up and down, up and down. <laughs> If you go around the chance of Tavis, but then now for this enough coin, coin, or you know, you could have directed, but you could do the young director, you could have done the other one, you could have done the other one. So then, well, once uh, he was way up on the tower and chance was at the bottom, he was tired and he says, I don't want this life any, anymore. So he throws himself down, and sure enough, Shams, with his uh, divine power, was able to grab him. And at that moment, he gave him what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. Everybody was there, 
and they brought uh, the, the, the body which had already you know, started to smell um, out of the grave and they put it in front, in front of Shams and the king asked Shams to go ahead and um, make my, uh, give my son back, back to me. So Shams walks to the body and says to the body, in the name of God, rise, and nothing happens. So king asks him, what happened Shams? It didn't, your magic didn't work. And Shams says, just wait. Had So, uh, Shams told the king just wait and he started to walk a little bit and went back again to the body and uh, tells to the body, the son of the king, in the name of Shams et Habriz, raise. And short, short enough, the, uh, he, he, he got up and uh, he was alive and he lived for another 20 years after that. That's the story of Shams et Habriz and Rumi, so if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. It's what was the reaction of all the kings and everyone who invited after the child? Were they upset? اما میگن که عکس العمل اون هم آدمایی که دور و بر شخص و پادشاه و اینا بودن که پادشاه دعوت کرده بود که وقتی که گفتش به اسم ممن برخیز پاشد عکس العملشون چی بود چی فهمیدن از اینجا شیدن کار نمیذارن یا خورده بود اون رو نبود چشمی نبود جایی نبود که مورد دندگی هیچ چیزی نبود Well, I think everybody was in shock because to see a dead body to suddenly come alive, is, it was so, so shocking to everyone. But I'm a Danish chie, that when Shams said that the best man back is... Danish Shams, God was the one who 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 was the one. Yes, ma'am. So she, how was the, uh, a 
his Ismail said that he was actually uh, in union with God before. I thought I heard him say that from that early that he said that he came here to help. اما جان شما گفتید که روح شمس تو اقیانوس وحدت بوده بعد اومده تو اون بیداری روحانی به دست آمد شمس طبیل رفت پتر که بابا جان بابا را قرار من دریای وحدت را پاس نمارد بیداره چکه But Shams Tabriz had received, uh, had got a, a spiritual awakening. That's why he was fully awakened and he could, uh, you know, rise the dead. And it's the same thing with Baba John, that Baba John gave, gave uh, that power to Meher Baba to be awakened. Was Tabriz a perfect master man or he was same? Who? Tabriz. Tabriz was perfect master. Baba had mentioned Shams and Tabriz was a perfect master too. I can ask him, but... Shams and Tabriz is a perfect master. Tabriz was a perfect master. Tabriz was a perfect master. Tabriz was from Tabriz and he was a perfect master. And Molana Rumi was from uh, Rumiye, which was the capital at that uh, capital of the time of Persia, Iran at that time. Rumiye. Yes. Um, thank you for your story. I would love to hear some stories about Rumiye with Baba. And I remember when I'm hearing stories about. Um, about when there were some experiences where he, Sanya, also had um, unusual things that would happen that were out of this world or something where he felt that it was happening. How much on, uh, so how many minutes he has? Thank you. 
yaşamında rızkı çekmeyin. Kimden adresinde bir hafta ahbedilen başlığı can kırdığı bir hafta basıyordu. Bu da ahar yine peder amirada şurada bu boru ama dersi bu konuda yani Alo baba bu aşırı tarzın okulu, tahsil okulu nasihat var ki bu tam çarşıma değil mi? Kalbi tarafı okulu. Ama o benim zamanı mutlaka yaşam tarzı tahtmış etmeliydi. Tabi tarzı gayretleri bu. Aşırı adamı. O vakit aşırı adamı. Bir hafta şirin bir daha da da bir hafta. اشیرا Well, uh, he mentioned that back in Iran, uh, he heard from his uh, uncle that Meher Baba is having a school in uh, India and uh, he, they accepting uh, students from all around the country. Uh, so he was, as soon as he heard that, he wanted to go and he wanted to join the school. Uh, at the, by, the, by then he was like 13 years old and he had read some books of Baba. And uh, so his dad was against it and he, he wouldn't let the permission but he didn't go to, uh, to school for like 15, 16 days. And eventually um, his mom was able to convince the, his dad to let him go. And then the last day the dad gave the permission uh, for him to, to go. So then um, they arrived in Mehrabad. He um, was thinking, you know, he was seeing different uh, people and he was thinking to himself, is that Meher Baba, is that Meher Baba? And then he would say no. And then suddenly he saw Beidul, his, his uncle Beidul ran and start bowing down to, uh, to a gentleman, to a man. And then he realized that, oh, he must be Meher Baba. And uh, then, all the kids were lined up uh, based on their heights and at that time he was the tallest of all the students so he was at the end uh, so and, and they were uh, the kids all coming from Iran so Baba came and uh, gently grabbed them and kissed them and they bowed down to Baba's feet and when he was, he was, it was his turn to bow down to Baba's feet, Baba just ran away. And that upset him a lot, that why did Baba run away from him and he wasn't able to completely bow down on his feet. <laughs> چطور شدی که بابا محله من هم گردن نگردن با برچه ها چطور گردن گردن با برچه ها چطور گردن من نگردن خیلی ناراحت شد و همه این ناراحتی باید شد که من وقت به مدرسه هم میرفتم از دوستان سالی هم کنم که انسان با خوده میرسه که خوصا افسادی گفتم مگر انسان میتونه با خوده برسه خیلی دیگه خیلی بیشتر و دیگر خیلی بیشتر و داشتند و 
مشاهده آسمان پیدا میشه و حقیقت آسمان پیدا میشه تو دریا افراد کجا میتون پیدا شکر از اون تو این فکر را بودم که تا یه بود که هر کلاس بودم اصلا دیگه هیچ وقت هر کلاس بودم توجه به هیچ کف نداشتم هیچ صدای دیگه بودشم بیم اومدیم اصلا خیلی بچه ها بودم تقریبا فرد پنگ شست هم هم تو تاگر بود و بود تو داشت خیلی از ما صدای اونها بودشم نمیگذید اما اینطور در همه آرماس بودم میخواستم که یک هر شبه ها وقتی که یه همان خواب میره خواب دارم نکنم تا از دلوی شاید بیشم که صدای پا حتی تا بیرونه بیرام طرف جنگل و اونجا بشنم مراقب بکنم So uh, when I went uh, to my class and started, uh, you know, uh, learning some uh, some some uh, poetry, Persian poetry, I remember that my instructor Kefus Rafsari uh, said that song from Bustan Sadi, which says, "The human being can reach God." And as soon as I heard that, I said, my God, I can become God. And it was a shock to me, and it was so good, so good that I found a clue that I can make it and I can do it. And then at that time, suddenly, everything else in material world was ended for me. I, I didn't have any interest in uh, studying. I didn't have any interest Uh, playing with other kids or associating or talking what uh, I was just thinking and what uh, the only thing was in my mind was I want God and I want to reach God and where can I see see God whether he's in the sky or in the deep of the oceans or in the mountain so this is all I was 24 hours I was thinking And then suddenly, or little by little, I, I started to think that here, this location, I cannot concentrate uh, on uh, finding God because of all the people around me and the kids around me, too much noise and disturbance. So I want to go to the forest and I want to go away from here, run away. And uh, maybe in the forest, I can uh, find God. So that was in my mind. In Buddha, Masara Kerofda, we had actually in the Kerofda, I was having a big picture that then we can buy a channel. He had in the dark house, but he got to Masara Kerofda. Je suis sûr que dans l'Islam, tu as dit que 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 tu as dit بعد میدم که بابا پشت فرمان بایسته به تا بایان سیدم خواهدم درشنش بگیرم من رو بغل کردم و برداشت اون که چه رو درست نمیتونم بکنم نمیتونم چرا نمیتونم بکنم چرا بگم من نمیتونم نمیتونم که که از غصه پدرت مادرت پیوز و فامیلت همه این را پیوز و فامیلت گفت که کارکنان مدرده چی بیده تا تا بگیده و مرده مردم معلم نه ایچ کنم تو بینی چی بود تو پیدن از چرا دفتیم که هم نمی کنیم من هم چرا می فرسم پاکیم تو رو می فرسم ایران نه اول رو می فرسم پاکی داریم من تو تخمیم هم این را داریم اینجا می رم تو جنگ در مشکل اوانت می شم و بکرم دارم بکرم این فکر تا کدام با پیدن می فرسم ایران I don't think I'm more happy or I'm talking to this other person. I'm never to know. 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 I'
is meant to bring the carriage. And then I can see Baba's face was all yellow. It was like saffron, the color of saffron. Baba looked so pale and so weak and uh, sick. But uh, then Baba's men brought the carriage and he sat on the carriage and then he asked a Spaniard to stand up at the edge of the carriage. And once the guys start to move, move uh, them up the hill, then he was kind of couldn't um, con control and he was uh, losing his stability and falling down and he didn't know where to hold and Baba says, grab my shoulder, grab my arm. So he grabbed Baba's arm and then he went uh, together on the carriage all the way uh, up the hill. And when they came down, Baba asked, Baba told him, see how bumpy was the road? See, if you didn't have my arm, you would have fallen. That's the same in a spiritual path. It's very tricky and very bumpy, and if you do not hold, hold on to my arm, you cannot go through that path, and you, you cannot reach the destination. So, um, are you going to follow me now? I, I can show you God. And Espanol was very happy, and he says, yes, Baba, I will obey you because that was the only thing he wanted, to find God. And what easier it was for him just to stay there and Meher Baba is going to show him God. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, yes, Baba, I will obey you. So Baba says, just hold on to my shoulder and do what, what I ask you to do. Any other questions? That was part of the beginning. Somebody asked about how you came to Baba. So, any other questions? You... Yes. I just had a quick Shams question. Yes. Um, where did Shams go after Rudin was God realized? I'm a John. I'm a guy in the Rastani Shamsu Rumi. In Kanuni for Sante. وقتی که رومی خدا رو شناخت و خدا وز شد شمس کجا رفت زندگی آخر آقابت شمس چی شد؟ شمس کجا رفت؟ تبریر بود و همین دو تو تبریر اما خب همیشه مثلا رفت در دوگه پرنده فلوشن های که پرنده بود شد گوکر <laughs> Uh, well, uh, Shams Tabriz went back to, ta to Tabriz and then he, you know, was doing his mischief around like uh, he would go to a bird shop that they would uh, sell birds so you can purchase them and barbecue like chicken and all that and uh, so Shams uh, told the bird seller, well, give me some of a few of those birds, I'm hungry, I want to make some kebabs <laughs> and eat. And then uh, the, sh the uh, bird seller said, okay, give me your money. And he said, I don't have any money. And then he says, well, I don't have any bird for you if you don't have any money. So Sham says, well, I'm going to do a pish. And quiche. <laughs> quiche. I'm going to do a quiche and all the birds will run away. And he says, do it. And then sure enough, he, he just said quiche and all the birds got feathers and, you know, started to walk and run away from the sun. <laughs> so they got life and feathers and run away. That's another story of Shastafis. <laughs> but he eventually, Passed away in Tabriz in his own hometown.
میگه خود این طور بازی میکرد این بود که شما فهمید که مرد دنده میکنم اون که هیون دنده میکرد اون هم اوکات اون پتر بادشان بودی دنده کرد So the king had heard that story of him uh, giving life to all these birds. That's why he asked um, to give life to his son too. Yes. As us attending to Baba's Sahabas, is there anything that you have to tell us just to as a closing remark, you know, to be able to remember in this conflict? <laughs> اما جان محبوبه میپرسن که شما نصیحتتون برای ماها چیه که ماها الان اومدیم اینجا تو این صحاباس حاضر شدیم و چه نصیحتی دارید که ما هم بتونیم در این راه گلند و پایین روحانیت که حالا توش هستیم یا نیستیم بتونیم راحت به خدا برسیم چی به بابا برسیم اگر قول میدن که اول کنم من بشون میدن If you promise that you will act on it I obey I will tell you I will try I will try 